Hello! In this video, I'm going to talk about some cyclic conjugated polyenes, um, <clears throat> of which benzene is just one. And in previous videos, I've talked about benzene and benzene having this uh, additional resonance stabilization, which we call aromaticity. In this video, I'm going to talk about cyclobutadiene and cyclooctatetraene, which are, is the cyclic conjugated polyene the next step down from benzene and the next step up from benzene. And, and just talk a little bit about their properties. Uh, and we're going to find out that they are not aromatic. So we move cyclooctatetraene out of the way for a minute. Cyclobutadiene. Cyclobutadiene is not stable. It undergoes a spontaneous diels alder reaction with itself. Uh, I like to draw my diene on the left. I'm weird. Uh, cyclobutadiene undergoes a spontaneous diels alder reaction with itself. form this ooh, screwy looking tricyclic adduct. There we go. Or, no. Uh, and if you think this thing looks strained, that's because it is. And this thing undergoes uh, an electrocyclic ring expansion in the middle here to form, get ready for it, cyclooctatetraene. Basically, uh, all efforts out there to make and isolate cyclobutadiene don't work very well. Uh, except at very low temperatures. So there's something about cyclobutadiene that makes it like the opposite of aromatic, right? Benzene um, has this additional stability because it's aromatic. This behavior that cyclobutadiene displays is something we would call anti-aromatic. And there are other potentially anti-aromatic compounds out there, things that are the opposite of anti-aromatic. So uh, destabilized by their resonance situation that they react with themselves and they spontaneously decompose or, or other things. Uh, because cyclooctatetraene is the end result of the self-reaction of uh, cyclobutadiene, you might be surmised that cyclooctatetraene at least is stable. This is a stable compound. It can be synthesized, isolated, observed, characterized, but it has uh, some un unusual properties. So for example, if we were to react cyclooctatetraene with one equivalent of bromine under the right conditions, if this molecule were aromatic, it would undergo uh, a substitution reaction. But cyclobutadiene undergoes a or undergoes an addition reaction that produces the enantiomer as well. So cyclobutadiene or I'm sorry, cyclooctatetraene, cyclooctatetraene reacts like an alkene. Uh, and it just so happens that perhaps the, uh, this behavior of cyclooctatetraene is not so unusual if you get a chance to look at its structure I 
complicated. Its three-dimensional structure is not perhaps what you would expect. Cyclooctatetraene adopts this kind of boat-like conformation. It's a little bit tricky to convince uh, my chemistry drawing software. And what uh, this boat-like conformation means is that the p orbitals on the individual alkenes aren't you know lining up with each other so the pi bonds are what we would call orthogonal uh meaning that they you know they don't overlap so orthogonal is, is like an extension of perpendicular right? so that so this molecule is actually not conjugated because it's not planar And therefore, it's going to behave like an ordinary alkene. And we would call this kind of molecule non-aromatic. This is a big difference from anti-aromatic. Anti-aromatic molecules really are, are, are so unstable that you, they don't really exist under ordinary temperatures. Cyclooctatetraene does, but it reacts like it's an alkene and not like it's uh, a conjugated system. In the next video, I'm going to share with you uh, a molecular orbital theory approach to understanding the difference between cyclobutadiene, benzene, and cyclooctatetraene, and some other uh, ring systems. And then we will look at heterocycles. So, thank you for watching.